Good morning. Uh, la sémantique, uh, an introduction to the study of meaning. Uh, there is a certain confusion concerning the terms uh, semantics, semiology, uh, semiotics, logic, and even philosophy. There are some overlaps and mixing, if you like, but we'll try to uh, clarify them as much as uh, we can. Well, if we start chronologically, we go back to the Greeks and with the great uh, Aristotle and his famous book, The Organon. You find that logic has got three main or major chapters, which are concept, truth, and syllogism. And then in the modern times, and especially after the fierce battles between the European superpowers, uh, people came to be dissatisfied with the human being and including with his language, with natural language. So some people uh, in England and Germany and other places uh, tried to replace natural language with mathematical language. Uh, this is uh, found in the works of uh, English Bertrand Russell and uh, German Frege. So mathematics gave them the truth, if you like. But other people said, no, we won't believe anything to be true unless we can see it. I can see it before my very eyes. And those are German Carnap. They are called positivists or empiricists. So they want to see things. But here, uh, Herr uh, Worry, warum liebst du? Uh, ich weiß nicht. Uh, another school of uh, dissatisfied people uh, you find when you cross the Atlantic and go to America with the uh, fireman Benjamin Lee Worth. He believed in the diversity of languages, in fact, a uh, sort of uh, superiority of one over the other. So if you spoke English, uh, you would have a logical, rational, scientific mind. But if you spoke uh, Navajo or Apache, it would be primitive and superstitious and confused. A little bit like myself, <laughs> though I'm not Apache. Anyway, so, uh, Worth believed in determinism, that is, the language you use determines the way you think, right? But there were some reactions, some people considered natural language to be a true instrument for uh, logical reasoning. And those were uh, people like Wittgenstein, uh, Chomsky and others. Well, Wittgenstein said the uh, problem is not with natural language, but the problem is with the researcher who didn't see the uh, perfection of natural language, uh, that it is a uh, game of chess something like uh, the yin and the yang in the Taoist philosophy. And then came uh, Professor Chomsky with his transformation generative grammar and his focus on syntax. And he showed how you could neatly build the sentence step by step in a mathematical way uh, when he said that uh, a sentence equals a noun phrase plus a verb phrase and the verb phrase equals a verb plus a noun phrase and a noun phrase equals an article plus noun where these are finite rules that can generate for you an infinite set of sentences and he considered language to have two structures a deep structure and a surface structure and then uh, a component for meaning or semantics but there came some of his students, uh, including Hajj Ross. Uh, he liked calling himself Hajj. I asked him, he said, uh, he liked to be called Baba when he's small. Now he likes to be called Hajj. But it's, it's got nothing to do with Islam. So Hajj Ross and the group of Chomsky students who came to be known as the generative semanticists uh, suggested that you didn't didn't need three structures for language. You only need 
a phonetic structure and a semantic structure. Well, let me finish by showing you some icons and ask you what they mean for you. Well, let me just start with this gentleman. Uh, this one. This one. Uh, those nice guys. Uh, simply this. Uh, je voudrais connaître votre sémantique, s'il vous plaît. Merci.